It's always an opportunity, a rich opportunity, to hear good news, to hear a fresh word. When I asked, I think it was David, I said, uh, uh, what would I do that would be of the most benefit? He says, want you to do exactly what you feel God wants you to do. Well, for all my ministry, I preach from the lectionary. The lectionary was a text that for each Sunday of the year was given an Old Testament, a New Testament, an epistle, so that you could have uh, a broad spectrum of good news to consider. Well, I always felt that uh, it was the gospel that I wanted to highlight because it is the words of Jesus that we need to hear and to allow into the depths of our being. And so on this day, the good news comes from the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 25 to 30, where we read, at that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son choo chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary, and find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This morning I'd like to speak on the subject climb on my back and use that 28th verse as our text where Jesus says to us come to me all you who are weary and find life burdensome and I will refresh you Today, I want those words not just to rattle around in your head. I want these words that Jesus spoke to sink to the depths of your being. Back in May, I had the rich privilege of going to Houston, Texas, where my oldest granddaughter, Chloe, was graduating from high school. And it wasn't, for me, just a typical graduation. Chloe was graduating as the valedictorian of her class. Her dad said to me, Hey, Chloe, 
has no clue of what a bee is. All of a sudden it hit me. All A's. And she took the prep course. Chemistry, physics, mathematics. And so she was given the opportunity, 10 minute talk. And uh, she decided that she was going to utilize five adjectives that typified experiences that her class had experienced. Her first adjective was compassion. You know what compassion is? Oh, it's undergirding is love. And after she had said what she was going to say about compassion, she then went to the Old Testament and captured the Shema, which Jesus posed as the question to the rich young man who had everything, who was questioning Jesus. And Jesus said, what is the number one commandment? And the man said, love the Lord with all your heart mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Where did a 17-year-old come with this kind of maturity of the Christian life? Oh, I'm sure with all that her family has dealt with, she's come to realize that love is the foundation. So she said to her graduating class, as we go to our next level, we must build our life on this commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. A 17-year-old girl captured this. Oh, I know. A lot of people have it rattling around in their head, but Chloe let it drop 12 inches. That's where it belongs in our heart. And Jesus was saying this, all you who are weary and find life burdensome, oh, it's it's a figure of speech that comes from the laboring people of Jesus' time. Hard-working slaves, farmers bent with burdens of labor on their backs. It comes to us in the gospel as a symbol of the heavy burdens we, each one of us, is asked to carry in this life physically, emotionally, spiritually. Come to me. Hear him. Come to me, all who are weary, and I will refresh you. This standing invitation extends to everyone, black or white, red or yellow, rich or poor, 
middle class, native or immigrant or refugee, high and mighty or low and downtrodden, famous and infamous, Jesus' call, come, is extended to everyone. You and me. Everyone is destined to share life's burdens from time to time. Not a single burden of one single person was bypassed on Jesus on the cross, and he turned to the, feet, the thief and says, this day it went to your heart, to the depths of your being, and you shall be with me in paradise. This is for everyone whose world has crashed down. Everyone whose world has crashed on top of them. Everyone who has a cancer or arthritis or arachnoiditis. Migraine headaches. A withered limb. Everyone is included. Everyone who dreads the dawning of a troubled day. Everyone who is overwhelmed by anxiety about the future. Everyone was troubled with a gnawing feeling of uncertainty about their life. Everyone whose spirit cannot rest because of an intense hatred they have for another. Everyone who is victimized by slavery to some awful habit. Everyone was included. I'm reminded of a popular song by a, a very outstanding rock group from England known as The Hobbies. The, a very popular song speaks to us, they said, I am strong, strong enough to carry him. He ain't heavy. He's my brother. He's my brother. He ain't heavy is something akin to what Jesus is saying about the way he feels about each one of us. How frequently, how frequently in hostility or anger, we say, come on, get off my back. You're bothering me, get off my back. And Jesus is saying, come, come, climb on my back. I will refresh you. I will support you. I will give you spiritual uplift. I'll create an electricity in your being that will overturn this world. Come on. Climb on my back. It is you. It is me that who Jesus is speaking 
when he says, climb on my back. It's the real living flesh and blood, you and me, for whom Jesus carries life's burdens. Those of us with ongoing concerns for the frailty of our physical body, come to Jesus with your heavy burden and be refreshed. Those of us with a twisted spirit that causes us to hate and cause others to regard us as hateful, come to Jesus with your heavy burden. Those of us with the frightening sense of life's purposefulness come to Jesus with your burden and be refreshed. So, I'm asking each one I'm asking each one of us here this morning in the deepest center of your life to really feel yourself confronted with Jesus' electric presence, to really experience the presence of God himself and Jesus as he comes to live in the depths of your being. Jesus comes to bring us rest and refreshment from our heavy burdens, not with empty words, but with the awesome message he cares. And he gives us hope. We love him for his, rel uh, for his outstanding presentation who, of God. But more than that, we love him because he is our hope for life itself. This is his promise. I have come... I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. I have come that we, each one of us, can have life and have it abundantly. Because he is our hope of life itself, Jesus is the one who can bring out the best in each one of us. God revealed in Christ is the one who can help us fulfill those hidden dreams that we all possess, all those dreams that we dream of ourselves. God revealed in Jesus Christ is the one who can confirm those feelings deep within us that we should be more than what we are. Years ago, Mikhail Beriznikov, the ballet dancer, who deflected from Russia, completed a two-week performance at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. One who was a ballet enthusiast wrote as they attended every performance that Baryshnikov made. Whenever Baryshnikov came on stage, there was an electricity you could feel it all over, just perfection in dancing. On opening night, the audience stood and applauded and cheered. 
for 20 minutes. I've never seen anything like it. It was absolutely fantastic. But as the two weeks went by, I realized something more amazing than the dancer. Brzeznikov, the dancer, chose a young woman, Giselle Kirkland, of the New York City Ballet. She was chosen to be his partner. Kirkland was up to this point an adequate dancer, but she was never considered a great dancer. In fact, several articles had been written about her lack of confidence and other articles that too much preoccupation with herself. But when she became Baryshnikov's partner, he was able to bring out the very best in her so that she was absolutely sensational. The electricity was there in her dancing. The audience sensed it. And she sensed it. And as they applauded her, tears rolled down her cheeks. And realizing that she had found found someone that could bring this out in her. I watched her dance with other partners during this two-week period. She was good, but not outstanding with those partners. But when I saw her again with Baryshnikov, there was electricity. She sparkled. She was radiant. She was full of life, and I realized that I was, I was seeing a miracle of one person bringing out the best in another. That is what Jesus does for us. Come, let me refresh you. Come, let me give you life. Come, let me give you hope. Come, let me give you optimism. Come, let me give you joy. Love at the depths of your being. I give you myself. I will live within you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we have heard good news. We've heard good news all of our life. And yet, we are challenged to let it down in the depths of us where we can show compassion and love to everyone especially to ourselves inspire us as we hear your voice saying to us Come, all who are weary and find life burdensome, and I will refresh you.
Amen. Amen.